Welcome to Switzerland, a new KHL territory. Not officially, of course, but this is where Red Army had their preseason camp last year. It was a new team, and it hadn't looked so powerful in many years. Red Army changed a lot even compared to the year before that. In two seasons time it was practically a brand new team. They wanted to become one of the best KHL clubs and it cost them. But now it's a team you can't ignore. Some love them, some loathe them, but everybody takes them seriously. The media is all over the team now. Many fans can't wait to see them fail. And many were not disappointed. Sergei Fedorov keeps rebuilding Red Army his own way despite Despite all the criticism, a former hockey superstar is now a busy manager. Red Army's main spawn has set a buy high enough giving him the best way to learn about sports management. The club's patron is Igor Sachin, president of Rosneft. His mission is to make Red Army one of the league's top clubs. One of his priorities is building a new rink for the team. New arena is expected to hold 20,000 people. Red Army ended last season with high hopes as a new team, and the fans expected them to do just as well as the unbeatable Red Army teams of the past. Last year they signed Alexei Morozov, Ivan Nipriyev, Fedor Fedorov, Ilari Filpula, Alexa Prikin and many others. Although this guy remains their biggest star. He may have a hot temper, but that actually helps him out there on the ice. It is not the same Radulov though, he's gotten older and working with Alexei Morozov also had its toll on him. It is hard to believe in it, but it's true. We're all getting older, says Alex Radulov. It was a different team. We had guys like Morozov and Shurakov, plus a few guys who came back from North America. As a leader, you have to work just as hard as everyone else. You're expected to chip in a little extra, but I'm not afraid of that. I'm used to that. I like it when guys look up to me and expect me to deliver. He's a very well-paid winger, says Sergei Fedorov. He has to score goals and make sure we win games when things get tough. However, when it came to the playoffs, Radulov couldn't help his team. He was out with an injury, and without him, Red Army was an easy prep for SKA St. Petersburg, who swept them in the first round. The year before that, Red Army lost to Dana Moscow in the second round, much because Radulov was shot down by the blue and white. Even the new Red Army team couldn't get the job done without their biggest star. Many believe it was mainly the fault of the coaching staff. For the first time in history, Red Army was coached by North Americans. It seemed impossible 30 years ago, and yet it was a reality. The bar was set so high that only a handful of Russian coaches could fulfill the expectations, but Red Army couldn't get their hands on them in time. This is why the club hired John Torchetti and Dan Brooks. But they had to let them go the very next summer. Everybody wants to win the Stanley Cup over Seas, and we want to win the Gagarin Cup here, says Vladimir Zharkov. Our goal for the season was very clear. It wasn't like, let's make it to the playoffs first and see what happens next. No, our goal was to win the Gagarin Cup and become KHL's best team. Torchetta didn't want to adapt to KHL hockey. Instead, he brought over the North American model, meaning he had his top six guys and two checking lines. He was very straightforward in his approach. He didn't want us to waste any time in our zone. He wanted us to get on the rush as soon as we get the puck. He wanted us to put high pressure on our opponents. I wasn't surprised by that. He also had a whole set of unique drills that I've never come across in North America. It was very interesting working with him. 
Right arm is goalie coach is a Finn named Yari Karala. He used to work with Lokomotiv before. His main focus is to make us think, says goalie Ilya Porskurikov. He doesn't want to see us just moving around pointlessly. He wants us to make the right decisions so we could get better results. It was a promising team, says legendary coach Vladimir Yurzinov. They had experienced guys like Radulov and Morozov, but they also had a lot of talented young guys from their junior team. They had great strength, skill and the right mentality since they already won the cup in the junior league. I'm glad they're getting their chance with the pro team. I hope they'll do well. One key issue Red Army needs to address is the turn-up at their home games. They need to bring fans back to the rink. I believe the team needs a new rink, says Valery Kamansky. Simple as that. We live in the 21st century. Fans are looking for entertainment and comfort. They want to enjoy hockey in the best possible way. This is how you bring them back to the rink. This and winning, of course. The new ring should be erected in the next few years, but for now Red Army awaits the fans here, at the old ring. And they do everything to lure them in. Promo videos are just a part of it. I think we're going to get better results with the fans when the team that we're building here is finally going to perform the way they want it to perform. Then the fans will get in lines to come see us play. This is one of our priorities. We will do whatever it takes to win them over again. Red Army is now one of the most intriguing teams in the KHL, despite their mediocre playoff record in recent years. This season is going to be once again a new team with a new coach and a dozen new names in the roster. Can the final establish their supremacy in the league, or is it going to be another frustrating year? We shall find out soon enough.